Hello everyone, and welcome to the Peddling Prince's Podium. I'm your host, John Ardelli, and I'm at Framework Cycle and Fitness today because Dr. Chris Milburn and his wife are doing a presentation on triathlons. Traffic session a few times. This is the second one we've done at the shop. Firstly, thank you, Bill, for the space. Triathlon is a great sport. It's a very, very healthy sport. I think the cross training aspect of it, the fact that you're not doing the same sport day after day, is a little bit easier on your body over over a long period of time. You get a, a little more thorough all body workout, not just your lower body like runners, or not just your upper body like swimmers, but you, you get a total cardiovascular workout that's easy on your joints. Julie's going to tell us a little bit about some basics of training. Some general principles with triathlon training. Whatever distance you're training for, you know, train for that distance. It's just kind of common sense, but you know, ideally you want to know that you can run five kilometers before you go into a race where you have to run five kilometers, and likewise uh, swimming and biking. If you have a weakness amongst the three sports, so for example you were a swimmer when you grew up, you can ride a bike pretty good, but you're a terrible runner, focus on running. Never do anything new on race day. So I've, I've seen people make that mistake many, many times. Oh, I just got a new wetsuit I'm, and I'm going in this race. It's the first time I've ever tried it. And then they find out that the wetsuit is strangling them or I just got this new sports drink and they end up getting sick to their stomach because the sports drink doesn't agree with them. So don't, don't try anything that you haven't tried before on the day of the race. Try, if you can, to prepare for the conditions that you might face during your first race. So for example, if you're doing Inganish as your first race, it's quite hilly. Make sure you know you know how to go up and down hills on your bike. Don't overdo it. So if you're really gung-ho, you're getting ready for your first triathlon and you're training yourself to the point where you're exhausted all the time, you'll just get slower, so that's not good. Get out and do some open water swims before the race because swimming in a pool, swimming in open water, not the same. And a lot of people who are very competent swimmers in a pool will still get a little bit panicky when they're out in the open water. For most races in Nova Scotia, the water is fairly cold. Most people will use a wetsuit. So if you're using a wetsuit for the first time, it's good to get out and try it out in the open water. And you don't want to take it into Kiwanis Pool because you probably won't have a wetsuit left after a couple of swims. A tempo run, meaning a short distance of the run being sort of at your race pace, so a little bit harder. So if you're if you're training for a 5K, you might want to do you know a mile, a mile and a half, 2K um, hard during that run, sort of at your race pace or a little bit below race pace. A lot of people when they do their first triathlon will say the worst part of it is the first kilometer of the run. Because when you jump off a bike and you've just been biking really hard and you start to run, you feel like you're going to fall down and die. It does get better <laughs> um, and, and you do kind of get used to it over time. And one of the ways you can get used to it is by, by training bike runs. So what we call a brick workout is sort of doing repeats. So you, you bike a, a short distance, eight or ten kilometers, jump off, run two kilometers, and then do it again. So you're getting used to that feeling of jumping off the bike and, uh, and running. Triathlon nutrition. For a sprint triathlon, race nutrition is not really all that important. Just a sports drink like Gatorade or any kind of sports drink is probably fine. You don't really need to worry about eating. If you're thinking of doing a longer triathlon, then you need to get into more calories because you will actually deplete your, your sugar stores in longer races, so you need to actually take in sugar. Sugar being the most important thing. And there's all kinds of energy gels like this, which is what I mainly eat when I'm doing longer races. And in really long races, like an Ironman, you actually have to force yourself to eat. But if you're doing a sprint triathlon, this kind of stuff is fine, just an electrolyte drink. People worry a lot about what should I eat, and I've seen people go into their first sprint triathlon, they're bringing like sandwiches and solid food and that and in a short distance race you really don't need it and all you're going to do is upset your stomach because your ability to digest properly shuts off as you're uh, exercising. And if you're racing in the heat, again particularly longer races, salt can be an issue. So again most of these drinks have lots of sodium in them but the only things you really need is sugar and salt. Everything else you can get after the race or you know, it, it's it's more of a long-term issue. But the thing that Julie wrote about replace carbs soon within one to two hours after workout, really it probably doesn't really matter unless you're going to do another workout again soon. So if you're doing a run in the evening and you plan to get up the next morning and bike and you only have about, t say, 10 hours from time you're running to when you're biking, it's probably 
um, important to eat soon after your first workout? Most races will have um, both water and something like Gatorade on the run. Actually, the, the most common scenario in longer races, believe it or not, dehydration is not the issue. Most people take in enough fluid, but not enough salt. So they actually dilute the salt in their body and, and they end up with what's called hyponatremia. You can get weak, you can actually pass out eventually if it gets really extreme you can get Muscle cramps, cramps and, and belly cramps and all these things and uh, most people think oh i'm just I'm, i must be dehydrated because they drink more water they dilute more so it's actually a salt issue not an issue unless you're getting into longer races people go out and they say uh, do you have a wetsuit oh yeah yeah i'm all set i got a wetsuit and they show up on race day and they got one of these uh, wetsuits that you'd use for um windsurfing, windsurfing or whatever and they are a lot worse than nothing because they act as a big parachute in the water. They're, they're not meant to swim in, so they're kind of loose around here. So when you're trying to swim, they're catching water and they literally work as a parachute. And I, I had the bad experience myself of wearing an ill-fitting wetsuit and it took me about twice as long to do the swim as I normally would. People ask me a lot about what kind of bike to get when they're getting into triathlon. This is a triathlon bike here with this setup. If you look at this seat, this seat is almost directly above the pedals. So this seat is, is quite a bit forward, whereas this seat is quite a bit behind the pedals. So the whole geometry of this bike is different. You can't very well take a road bike and just stick aero bars onto it and expect to drive it. The reason for that is because your bum is back far, and then when you put aero bars on it, you're stretched out like this, puts you in a really tough position. Puts you in a tough position to stay controlled, and it puts you in a tough position in terms of uh, uh, comfort. If you can picture on the triathlon bike, your bum is further forward over the pedals, and so it's a more natural position. It's very comfortable when you come down onto the bars. With the triathlon bike, you're down in this position out of the wind because the air resistance of your body through the wind is, uh, is the biggest factor really slowing you down. So the more you can decrease the air resistance, the faster you'll go. And that's why triathlon bikes are set up this way to sort of put you in a very comfortable aerodynamic position that you can maintain. This is a water bottle that actually allows you to stay in that position. So it's a water bottle that uh, has a straw that comes out. So it just basically sits, you, you strap it on with an elastic, has a straw that comes out. Um, so you never have to even get up to reach for a water bottle to have a drink. You just, your, your water is right there, your Gatorade or whatever. So you never really need a triathlon bike, right? Do they make it faster? Yes. Lots of people do triathlons for years on a road bike with no aero bars, but you got to keep in mind that it is, uh, it will be a little bit of a disadvantage. You can get a spe special seat post that comes up and then tilts forward and effectively does the same thing. So if you picture on a road bike, the seat's going to be back here, but if you get a seat post that curves forward, it'll bring you into the same position and suddenly you're close enough for that to actually, that setup to actually work. So there are ways to tweak your road bike, so don't, don't go uh, throwing your uh, road bike out by the side of the curb next heavy garbage day. You know, like we've talked a lot about fancy equipment and rules and, you know, and, and it all, if you haven't done a triathlon before, it's a lot of information. It can seem kind of overwhelming. When you actually get there, it's pretty simple and, and it's pretty self-explanatory and you don't need all the best equipment, especially when you're starting, you know, but uh, to, to finish a triathlon and, and, you know, do reasonably well, you don't, you don't need a whole lot. And, mm -hmm. Just, uh, it, it's a lot of fun. There's a great quote from uh, Sherry Gruenfeld, who's a 60-something-year-old lady who does the Hawaii Ironman just about every year and wins her age group most years. She said she's never met anyone who, after they finished a triathlon, said, I wish I hadn't done that. So everybody, once they've finished it, says, I'm, I'm really glad I did that. Whether they ever do another one or not, they're you know, universally happy that they did it. So as much as you might be nervous beforehand or, you know, I'm crazy, and you—you you will. I, I almost in, in the middle of almost every travel I've ever done, which is hundreds. I ask myself, why am I doing this again? This is crazy. And then, yeah. And then as soon as I finish, like, when's the next one? Thank you for watching the Pedaling Princess Podium. I'm your host, John Ardelli, and I hope to see you all again here next week. Bye for now.